Hi, you're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAficionado.com, uh, part of Tequila Aficionado Media. I am Mike Morales here in San Antonio, and our gal out there, who is, who is she? Tell us who you are. Rebecca Sager, and I'm out here in Los Angeles, and uh, I'm so excited. This is my first tasting with you, and I'm so happy to be here. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, and so are we. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak in my headset. No. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Excellent. Uh, we're just trying to cut down on some reverb because now these computers are so well made. The microphone <laughs> picks up everything, and I'm pretty loud. So, bear with me. I look funny, but hey, you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. It's good. Um, tonight, Rebecca, you th this is a a neat thing. I was so so glad that we got a hold of this this brand. Um, they. Uh, we're really nice enough to to uh, have these out for you. We are going to taste tonight Amorada Tequila. Morada. Amorada. You have to give them the whole spiel. I the, have to give them the whole name. The Night of Passion. I looked, yeah, it, this is the longest name I've ever seen on the Gnome list. It's, uh, it's out of Gnome uh, 1463. There are not very many brands that come out of there. Uh, Pueblo... Pueblo Mágico, Selección Azteca, Familia Azteca. So they're very, it, there's maybe so, 10 or 12 names, 12 brands that come out of there. But do you consider this a, a, a certifiable boutique brand tequila? I would say at this point, yes. It does, you know, uh, being what they call a maquiladora, when, when yeah. you, you're, a, you're a distillery that makes several brands for other, uh, for other uh, owners. This is there's only a handful of tequilas that come out of here. I mean, it's probably more than ten, but that's about it. I, I think they're probably at a maximum. They're uh, for, known 1463. The, the full name of this thing is interesting. It's Amorada, the essence of passion. Put some passion in your life. Jeez. That is that is que romántico. <laughs> <laughs> que, que romantico. Ay. Is it tequila que romantico? <laughs> que romantico. Well, you know, I don't know. I've had tequilas called donkey piss. I don't know how romantic that is, but That's you know, true. yeah. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna use our, our reels and champagne glasses tonight. We're gonna pour some. We uh, we were kind of off camera a little bit and uh, talking about the uh, the blanco. As you can see, it looks like a genie in a bottle. It photographs really well. Yes, it's beautiful. Yeah. Very heavy glass bottle. Yeah, it's kind of bottom heavy. And mm -hmm. we're going to pour some of the Blanco because, as we all know, the, the Blanco is the, 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 start. the start of the entire line. It's a synthetic cork, as you can see. We didn't get any any uh, POS material with this. Um, so we're. I know that they are uh, a brand that's based in, in Austin, if I'm not mistaken. Um, in Austin, Texas, and so they moved heaven and earth to get samples to uh, to Rebecca. So that was really nice of them. We really appreciate that. Um, what do you think so far? What I know that our lighting's probably not the greatest right now, but what it, what does it look like for you? I mean, it's it's fairly dense. You know, it looks like there's some body to it for mm -hmm. a blanco. I think um, it's not. I mean, I, it could be that it's not super bright in here, but I mean, it looks. It's got a little little weight to it i think yeah it's got some pretty legs and tears it's the, it's the sheeting that the the crown yep. of tears you can see on your glass yeah and um and smelled it earlier it was it as i i thought it was fairly smoky you know as in as in baked smoky yes. we we did the um uh off camera we did the the um uh the smell the smell of vision as i like to call it where you take a little bit <laughs> in your hands and you diffuse it, you know, just like aftershave, and then you smell it, because sometimes it's very, uh, for those people who have never been to a distillery or don't know what baked agave smells like or tastes like, that's a really good indication without. Yeah, that, that was a great tip for people who don't know. It's a yeah. really, really good tip. Oh, it's even more delicious when you do the, uh, when you do the, 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 the aged, the aged tequilas, they, oh, the, the wood that comes out. I love this nose. I get some. I get some some citrus, some lime zest or something. Is it is it kind of citrusy to you, like grapefruit maybe? Yeah, there's some. There's a high note there. It could be citrus. That's a, that's yeah. 
I mean, it's interesting when we fir when I first poured it, and now as it's kind of um, you know diffusing a little bit, um, it's changing and getting a little more. But I still there is a little bit of a I want to say like a rose smell. I don't know. Do you smell that? It could be. It could be a little bit floral. You know, if you're getting roses or or uh, uh, like a rose oil, maybe. Yeah. Do you smell it, or is it just me? Uh, to, you could be. You know, I again, I I'm no. you know there there are things that you can that, that maybe you're picking up that I can't. You know, I mean, I I try to go from left brain to right brain and left nostril to right nostril, because. <laughs> It, and when, depending on the glassware you're using, we're, I'm using Regals tonight. You you'll be able to get different yeah. things out of it. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's true. And there's very little alcohol. I'm not getting hardly any alcohol in it at all. I did I did a, a bit more when we first poured, but but it's gone now, right? Yeah, it's gone. Uh, yeah, uh, I say let's go into it and see what we got. Mm. That's very nice. Mm. I'm sorry. I normally don't swallow my first one, but wow, that was really good. That's very, very, for a Blanco, that is incredibly full. Uh, yeah, uh, you notice it, that it was a, a little bit of the white pepper on your palate. Yeah. Just enough to make it interesting. And then the finish, how do you like the finish? I think it's like a medium to long finish. Mm -hmm. You're getting a warm fuzzy down the. I don't. I'm not a big fan of very very spicy tequilas mm -hmm. when I feel that really strong peppery and and I and there are some great tequilas that have that, but it's not my favorite. I prefer this actually to something to that. It's it. I like the subtlety of of the spice, but I don't want it to that to be the whole thing. Okay, all right. Well, that's that's good to know because. I know that uh, just last week, I think, um, we did some tastings uh, on, on camera. Actually, with Dave Dinius, we did his tasting, and the pepper just exploded in your mouth. You know, <laughs> you, it, do you like that? Yeah, well, you know, for me, if, mm -hmm. if you're asking what my preferences are, I always enjoy the Blancos. And any distiller worth his, his, his salt will, will put okay. up his Blanco against any other tequila, any other Blanco. Because they know that that this is a good indicator of the rest of the line, and and I love a blanco with character, and it doesn't matter to me what kind of character that is. It it could be peppery, it could be you and I were talking on camera Fortaleza, which is, you, you know, the people love the nose, and I to me the nose is just the first thing. I love the flavor profile of a of a tequila made with a taona, which is what is Fortaleza is. And this is, you know, this is nice. Um, I was thinking of, about food with this. What would you, what would you pair this with? This is pretty hearty. I mean, you could do a nice, like something. If it was a chicken, I would think a hearty meal. Like the first thing I thought of was a, a beef thing, but you could do a chicken with a sauce. Wow, and just... that's really that's that's interesting because most of the time when you pair, you you think of using a. Um, uh, a, a more a darker spirit, the darker expressions at, at, with meat, but you're not. You're thinking this, like is, this will hold its own on a. I think it holds its own. I think it's pretty for a blanco. I think it's a a, a start, a good starter. I mean, a, you know, for for. A, yeah, I like this. Do you think? Uh, do you think that? Uh, uh, well, obviously, you, this would be great in a cocktail, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, this would be good. I almost want to say I don't know how how much I'd want to cover this up. I've been having these the some cocktails lately with Fortaleza, mm -hmm. and just to try it because I've tried it with different things, and I've noticed that these um, mixologists they're always they it's their first go to thing tequila that they recommend for for cocktails, and it's because it adds this great depth to a drink, especially if you're drinking like a citrusy kind of drink, which is what I do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like a Paloma or something, and you have that, it just makes this like full bodied, of course it's good in a margarita, fresh, great margarita, which this would be great with. Oh yeah, I, I think that there's enough character in mm -hmm. this Blanco that it would hold its own, you know, in any kind of a cocktail, but I'm, I'm really surprised. What I know, uh, 
I'm, I'm surprised for a couple of reasons. What I know is that number one, the brand owner is a woman. Uh, uh, Tere Glassman, I believe, is her name. Uh, and again, they're based in, in Austin, Texas. Uh, so you may have seen. The funny thing is, I you know my neighbors, uh, I I had their 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 bus, their mm -hmm. branded uh, van came up to my door. Uh you know, most neighbors have the ice cream man come to their door. I get the tequila truck that comes to the door. I'll take the tequila man. Yeah, me too. Um, you know, and and the the thing was that they um, uh, they they their the van is painted, you know, with all three of their bottles. Now, right now they only have a blanco and a reposado. My understanding yeah. is that they're coming out with the añejo. Um, at, and that comes in a red bottle, so the red bottle that you'll you'll see on their logos and on their websites, um, and on their Instagram accounts, you, that's that's upcoming. So we're hoping that that we get a hold of the of the the Anielho here shortly. Um, hey, you know I don't know about you, but I think this is worthy of a brand of promise nominee. What do you think? I do. I really like it. I think it's a it. There's some depth to that uh, tequila. I thought I, I'm very impressed. I can't remember. I'm trying to remember what I tasted with you very, you know, like a few months back that was so peppery. What was it that, that I you, tasted? You and I had, uh, uh, when we did the, uh, uh, your audition, when we did the audition, yeah. it was the Don Julio 70. Oh, it was, right. uh, yeah, it, and is... that is, that's a stripped down version of an Añejo, which yeah. I'm still, I still can't, you know, figure out. Bear with me here. I'm going to plug you in. Uh, I still can't figure out why why uh, somebody like Don Julio would do it because I, I for the longest time I really enjoyed their blanco. Yeah. And um, but that was a very peppery. Right. You know, to this, I, I I much prefer this. Well, in that case, okay. Amorada Tequila, I okay. we're gonna nominate this baby for Brand of Promise. Uh, and how many tequila brands would be would be uh, owned by women anyway? Isn't that something kind of fairly rare? It's it's becoming more and more common. But for those of you who've been following Tequila Aficionado, if you want to learn more about women in the tequila industry, you can see our you can read about our series on Tequila Aficionado. We keep coming up with a few more, and they're in different aspects of the business. Some of them are brand owners. Some of them actually are distillers. Uh, we discovered a couple of, uh, of uh, female uh, distillers that we didn't know anything about up until recently. So we're, we're discovering them and, and we're giving them a voice. And uh, okay. don't be put off by the, uh, you know, by the, by the bottle. It, there's, there's a real hearty, it's, it's, not, a, it's not, a, not geared toward the female palate. I think it's geared more toward the traditional kind of tequila. Yeah, it's a, that that blanco is also would be. I mean, that's a great after dinner. Wow, wow! <laughs> you're you're just breaking all the rules. That's cool. I love this. I love this. So, Brenda Promise nominee in in the uh, blanco category. Also, I think I think we should nominate her for packaging. What do you think? I love the packaging, but I will say the packaging does seem. It's a. I mean, it do, it feels slightly feminine, mm -hmm. but it's so pretty that it kind of makes a nice gift. Just because oh, the packaging is so pretty. Absolutely, I totally so, agree with you. I think your counter is kind of a pretty bottle. Yeah, uh, it's a nice decanter too. So exactly. um, yeah. anyway, that's our take on Amorada Tequila. Amorada, thanks you for the folks at Amorada. Uh, I gotta you. read that name again. Jeez, what a oh, name! Yeah. What's the Amorada Tequila? The essence of passion. Put some passion in your life. Oh my well, God, what a get romantico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio, Texas. That person there is Rebecca Sager. She's in LA. She's one of our brand new TJs here at Tequila Aficionado. If you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe down below. Uh, that, button. Press that red <laughs> button. You'll be very happy you, you did. Yes. And stick with us because we're about to try the reposado in just a few minutes. But thanks again. As we say uh, here at Tequila Aficionado, tomar. Sabiamente.